Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everybody. I'm inside. I'm in the greenhouse. I think there is going to be a really bad echo, so I'm going to take the microphone off. I'm sorry if that microphone is annoying, but I'm hoping that it will cut out some of the echo in the greenhouse. So in this week's video, I did like a faux brick floor for the greenhouse, and I wasn't sure if the greenhouse was going to be here in time to like share it in this video, but it is. Um, so I'm going to get straight into the video and I'm going to show you how I did a faux brick for like 20 quid. Literally, I paid for like, I think I paid 15 euro for a tin of paint and then a sponge. So I'm gonna get straight into that section of the video and then for my regular viewers, I'll give you a little tour around the greenhouse and I'll just chat and share kind of like my plants. Um, and then over the next few weeks, we can have fun in dressing it, putting some furniture inside as well. I'm just enjoying it. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button. So the concrete base that I am going to be doing the faux brick effect on is the base for my greenhouse. This was laid a couple of weeks ago and I'm just doing a quick recap for anyone who missed it. So I had to remove the wooden frame from the concrete base. I gave it a power wash and one sunny day last week, I painted it in white masonry paint. So it's like a creamy white shade and it is a Santex masonry paint and it was just some paint that I had left over. I applied two coats of this Santex paint and I actually have this paint on my wall. There's like little grains of sand or something in it but I do recommend it for walls. So I was like, you know what, if it was good for the walls, I'll try it out on the base. So I painted the whole base cream, let it dry and then I did the faux brick effect. I actually got this idea of Martha Stewart because I had seen people on Instagram, a couple of guys had tagged me in people's greenhouses and they had stenciled the floor. And I was like, I really want a brick floor. And I did look at reclaimed brick, but they're really expensive. I think it was about 400 to 500 euro just for the brick um, to do a reclaimed brick floor. So then I was like, there has to be an easier way. And I came across a Martha Stewart video. Originally, I had looked up and Googled like brick stenciled, came across her video and it was she had made her own stencil with sponges. So she had stuck sponges in a row. So I'm slightly doing it different because I'm doing it brick by brick, painstakingly brick by brick. And I'm just doing it by eye as well. I'm not like measuring it the exact gap in between. I go a bit wonky in some corners, but I think it adds to that kind of cottage old cobbled brick like if you notice like they're not perfect so i literally used a masonry paint in a red brick shade and i bought a tester pot of a darker shade and i'm just dabbling it in and as i place the sponge you'll see there's like white kind of gaps and i left them because they were giving me that like vintage like brick vibe like you could cut up a smaller sponge to make it like more perfect if you wanted to good morning day two brickwork so i was just catching up on comments from last week's video where there was a heat wave in that one it's still a heat wave it's great um not great when you're trying to brick paint brick on the base of a thing um but like ireland like we can't survive if we're in the late 20s like i think it was 31 degrees one of the days that's like the hottest like shocking hot huh? loads of you guys were like girl 27 30 degrees try being like 41 and 43 no ireland could not do that <laughs> we'd have a national emergency if it was that hot so I'm going out to finish the other side of the brick. It's a new day. I basically have to time it so that the base is in shade or I'll die. <laughs> and also the assembler is supposed to be coming tomorrow to assemble the greenhouse. The greenhouse is sittingly, sittingly, currently sitting in my front garden on a crate. And I've, I've been like, I hope no one robs that. Now you'd need a forklift to rob it. But you wouldn't know who would rob your greenhouse around here. <laughs> so, um, he's coming tomorrow to assemble it. So I need to finish the brick today. So 
I just gotta do it. I'm gonna have an audible on my phone and I'm just gonna put the blinkers on. Lots of water, lots of fizzy drinks. We're gonna paint this brick. And it's Friday as I'm doing this, which means Gardener's World is on tonight. Cheeky bottle of Guinness, cause I'll have well earned it from finish this brick. Could you imagine trying to paint the brick with the greenhouse on top of the brick and me in the greenhouse in a heat wave trying to assemble it? I actually feel bad for the assembler tomorrow, but in fairness, I'm sure the greenhouse assembly, I'll try and get a few clips. I'm sure it's all outside and it'll be in a shady spot when he's assembling during the day. Okay, enough talking. I'm just talking because I'm procrastinating putting off doing it. So in terms of time, it took me roughly, I would say six hours, but spread across like two days. So I did one half the previous day, and then it took me about two and a half, three hours to finish it off. And I had to kind of wait for certain sections to dry um, so I could finish it. So I kind of re recommend doing it in halves, but because it was a heat wave, the paint was drying so quickly. Now, I also want to talk about sealing. So I haven't done it yet because the greenhouse came and I need to do it, but I am going to use a clear water-based external varnish. So the likes of a yacht varnish, but I'm going to do like I want to find one that's matte and just make sure that it's water-based and not oil-based because if it's oil-based, it can tend to turn yellow. So I am going to seal this because I really do. It took me so long to do that. I want it to last. So a clear water-based varnish, that is on my to-do list. Um, but thankfully, like it hasn't had much traffic yet and the guys have assembled the greenhouse and there was no like damage to the floor. So I do wanna protect it. So that's just a little tip. If you are doing something like this, you can seal it as well. first look of the greenhouse and I'm absolutely in love with it. I'm going to be chatting about my plans for the greenhouse later in the video and then I will have more videos in the next few weeks where I will be styling it and dressing it and treating the wood as well. We're in the potting shed because the acoustics are better. Um, I think, well, greenhouses will be echoey anyway, and you can hear the magpies having a row. Okay, magpies have stopped. Um, no, they haven't. Let's just ignore the fighting magpies. The magpies fight with the blackbirds in my garden. Both of them had families this year. I've seen them feed their babies, but they seem to like fight over territory, so. That's what's happening. So, some details on the greenhouse. So, the greenhouse I got from an Irish company, Outdoor Living Die. I bought it, not hashtag ad or anything like that. And I had been like saving up. First of all, one of the things I would have absolutely loved, but they are so expensive, is do you know those like Victorian ones? The one like Lydia Elise Millen has, and it's like brick on the bottom. And then you have lovely glass windows on top. The ones you see in the likes of you know, like Malahide Gardens out the back or like the Botanic Gardens. So expensive for me anyway. They're beautiful though. So I felt like this was the best for my budget. I got, I had, I actually only ordered it a month ago, but what took me so long was trying to find someone to do a base. Um, because of the weight of it, I wanted like a solid base. Like if you're getting another type of greenhouse, um, like one of the models that are kind of more 
poly. Um, I don't think you need as strong a base, um, but check that out for yourself. Apparently there was like a shortage of greenhouses and materials. It was the materials. It was like something to do with Brexit. And obviously COVID as well. So that's why it took me so long to find a tradesman who would do a base for me um, because they were all like booked out, which is great to see them booked out and busy. So I had to be patient. The goal for the greenhouse is it's like a dual space. Yes, absolutely. It will be a greenhouse functioning with seedlings. It's the womb of the garden. Um, but also I wanted it as a secondary creative space. So somewhere that I can use like the lighting will be good. So for photography, for writing, um, so it's kind of like a little writing cottage as well. So my plan is I have ordered some like shelving to like stick on the back so that should give me some shelving for the likes of seed trays and things like that and there's like a covered storage at the bottom I'm going to like paint it and make it pretty I'm waiting on some paint to arrive so that will be like another video and then I'd love to maybe get an old writing desk um I have been kind of looking secondhand for like writing bureaus but I need to kind of put stuff in because I don't want to overwhelm the space with loads of furniture because you know yourself you don't need a lot to make it how you want it. Another thing I want to get is um, a fake stove. So I've been, like I said in my last video, I've been trying to get an electrician to fit me like an outlet, like an outdoor outlet and do a few electrical jobs because um, I would love to have some electricity just outside so if I am working in here that you know I can plug my laptop in and um, but also for like lighting and because you know in Ireland come October you can't rely on them solar power lights because it's dark all the time so I want to get a faux stove and have a little area where I have my writing desk there's like a little stove have some shelving Maybe a little rug, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna have to see when it rains if any water leaks in. Um, I'll have to kind of check that before. Um, it looks kind of solid and airtight. Obviously there's like a window, but I need to just kind of like double check if there is kind of any like water getting in, which hopefully there isn't, but we'll fix it if there is. So I'm gonna just enjoy, I think, August, like just having fun, like painting pieces for it, maybe going thrifting to find, you know, a writing desk, getting a cute chair, um, like putting it together. Um, so I won't have, I'll probably put together like a video, like, you know, start to finish, but I will share like each kind of like progress and stuff. I kind of want to just enjoy it. I think sometimes, especially with like DI DIY videos, we're so quick to be like, make over in a weekend in a day. And I'm like, I want to enjoy the process of doing it. One thing I am going to do is I'm waiting on an order of this wood oil so you'll see the wood is kind of darker it's a nice tone but it's quite kind of like on the gray side and originally a couple of weeks ago when myself and Karen went out to the outdoor living place we drove out to have a look at it in person um because I wanted to see what it looked like in person before biting the bullet and buying it and when we visited it that day it was lashing rain I think it was May you know rainy me and it looked really dark when it was wet and I was like I love this structure is absolutely perfect but I just want to lighten the wood so I'm not going to paint it but I remember being at a workshop with Authentico and they had lovely like exposed wood but it had a kind of grain to it so it was like it was whitewashed now I would whitewash furniture like inside the house but for outdoor stuff I was like that's not going to last. So they have this oil, it's called Grandiose, and I'm waiting on it to come. I'm like checking the tracking because I am going to, I'll share it like in a video, I am going to wash the wood with that oil um, because it will give it like another treatment as well and give it just a slightly lighter tone um, to the wood so it's not as kind of grey and it will tie in with the colour of the shed. Um, for anyone who's new, I'll pop a card here for the video where we decluttered this shed. Wasn't it horrible? My brother helped me. Spider shed. There's a few spiders here actually but I'm just like... So yeah, if you want to check out my cluttered before and after of my potting shed, um, you can check that out. So I think by doing that light oiling of the wood, of the greenhouse, I will kind of just marry it in. I also might change the knob as well. Um, do you remember your granny probably would have had them or like old hotels and B&Bs. Um, they would have like a floral 
um, knob and a plate. Um, I've seen one of them somewhere, but I might get one second hand. Um, so that's another thing. But again, we'll all do this. I will share this on the channel and you can follow along for the journey. Um, a lot of you guys are saying that you're not getting notified of videos. It's just the YouTube algorithm. But like I always say, every Thursday, 7 o'clock Irish time, I upload. So you can, yeah, just make a note. Now, Miss Blondie, I think, is going to join me. Hello, Blondie. So Blondie has sniffed around her greenhouse, um, but it's only off like two days. So she's had like a sniff around, she's pottered inside. She hasn't like gone for a snooze in it yet because I'd say when I put furniture in it and I'm inside working, um, she'll kind of venture in a bit more. Isn't that right, B? How are you? Actually, Blondie is quite handy to have in the shed because she's good at like scaring spiders away. She kind of like, Taps them. I don't think she kills them. That's her own business. But she's good at like chasing creepy crawlies. Isn't that right, Brie? And on that note, we will end the waffling there. And yeah, cheeky thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think. And um, the measurement as well. It's an eight by eight foot greenhouse. The base is ten by ten. I'm trying to think if there'll be any comments, but I'll do my best to kind of reply to them. Um, in the comments below and yeah I just popped a few pots in front of it to make it look um, just a little bit styled and like not so bare but it's kind of coming into like late summer in the garden here so some of the autumn flowers are starting to flower while some of the other ones are kind of dying off so it's like that in between <laughs> it's like that in between phase in the garden but so it is a goodbye from Blondie and me, cheeky thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, do hit the subscribe button and we will see you all in next week's video.